Hey guys, Silencio here. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Masters with me. It's been a really long time since I did a video on Pokemon Masters. Well, um, the main reason is because I've been busy in my full-time job and a lot of videos have been um, coming up for Uta Macross because so many things have been updated for the game and yeah, it's just been a hectic time to find free time <laughs> to do any Pokemon Masters content. Uh, aside from all the producer's letters that they've been putting out, you know, I'm pretty happy with what they have mentioned in, within the producer's letters itself. So I will be talking about um, the improvements they are planning and of course uh, the things that I have been personally finding very uh, unpleasant um, with the game you know up to the point before the uh, producers letters uh, mention about what they are planning ahead for Pokemon Masters um, due to all the fans feedback and all that kind of stuff so anyway guys let's dive back into Pokemon Masters and head straight into the scout page because apparently um, by the time I choose to do this recording else Alessa yeah uh, the electric gym leader uh, is disappearing by the end of 31st of October <laughs> so uh, by the time you watch this she may disappear from the scout side so anyways, it is still possible to obtain her, you know, but with a lesser um, percentage chance. You know, as usual, you know, the latest scout will always have the previous scout's trainer in them. So as you can see, Alessa is 0.555%, which is very, very low. But there is still a possibility of that happening. So let's take a look at Alessa and Zep Striker. Uh, hopefully, I'm not butchering her name, you know, because I'm I'm more familiar with her Japanese name than the American ones. So okay, let's take a look at Zep Striker's max level. Um, you know, considering that we should focus on their actual full stats, you know, so it's it's a more fair comparison than level one. Uh, but I just wish that Dana would have implemented a change onto the character information whenever you see their scout. Like um, Brendan's Treko, you know, we know that it can evolve. So if it does evolve all the way to its final form, will it be able to mega evolve? So that's another thing that I really want to know. Or maybe, you know, this version of Brendan's. Uh, character that you can actually pull up from this scout is just meant to be with Treko. It's not meant to evolve, you know that kind of stuff. So that's kind of sad if it's that if that's the case. So all right, let's break down uh, Alexa first. So the max level Zap Striker, Spark. So it takes two energy. Um, it uses the whoops. Uh, it uses the physical attack set. That's why you can see Zap Striker comes with two hundred and seventy attack. Then of course 149 under special attack. So Zep Striker is a physical attacker. So it's good against opponents that probably focus on special defense because their normal defense would be low in stats. So that's where Alessa comes in to dish out the most amount of damage. Alright, Wild Charge. It takes 3 energy, 150 power, 100% accuracy. Um, of course, if your accuracy is being lowered by an opponent's um, move, you know, so far we don't really see a lot of attacks that actually do stat changes much unless uh, you're playing strategically with certain trainers, which is not the case for Pokemon Masters at this point of time because the game is still within its um, play style of, you know, bishing dishing out the best damage possible uh, just to clear the stages. Alright, so while charged, uh, the user also takes 20% of the damage it dealt to the target. So it's pretty much like Terpic, 
Um, you know. So with that said, I think Z Striker is is a good offensive Pokemon. You know, to low level um, challenges or maybe stories or EX battles. You know, but still to take damage from its own attack, it's not a very uh, useful move. So if you were to just rely on Spark, Spark is just 50 power. Uh, it's not exactly a very hard hitting move, but you know it has a moderate chance of leaving the opponent paralyzed. So that's pretty okay. You know it does have, or rather, Alessa does have an X attack support, so that helps Z Striker dish out more damage. Electrifying restores a bit of the user's HP ensures that the user's next attack will be a critical hit. So I guess um, if you want to use Wild Charge to do the final blow, I guess that is fine. But if it's just to do initial damage, um, I wouldn't recommend you to do so. So it's, it's like a spark combo until you feel that you can knock out the opponent, then you use Electrifying and then of course you go with Wild Charge. Alright, let's take a look at his passive skills. Hit and Run 2. Occasionally raises the Pokemon's speed after he uses a move. So that's very good actually. Um, yeah, so Lift prevents the Pokemon from getting paralyzed. Okay, so well, that's probably a generic kind of trait that an electric Pokemon would have, I suppose. You know, not all Pokemon can, or rather, not all electric type Pokemon can resist paralyzing. So, hmm. so it does have a weakness to, um, I would say, rock. No, not rock, but ground type. So, yeah, take note of that. So, as you can tell, its role is, of course, the offensive type. So, you need those red cans to power her up, as usual. Uh, uh, we it's pretty hard to come by. Because there are so many trainers that are under the same category. Um, let me just recall what is it called? A buff, buff type. So yeah. So as you can tell, you know I've really run low on buff blends. Uh, so it's really hard to actually stock up on them because let's let's take a look at the trainers list for now. Um, let's say for example we level up, then we go to strike. You can tell there's quite a bit of trainers under the strike uh, role as compared to support and tech uh, do to oh wow tech actually has more um, okay <laughs> but you know we we plan we, we tend to use more trainers under the strike category you know considering that how the game is currently um, built in the sense that you know, you just need to dish out enough damage to knock them out so that you can't do any retaliation moves. So yeah, so I've been powering up quite a lot of my strike members as you can tell, I guess. You know, because most of them are like level 80 and 70. <laughs> Alright, so that out of the way, let's move on to Brandon. Oops, wrong button. There we go. Alright, so let's take a look at Brandon and his Treko. Let's max level them up. So Treko focuses both on attack and special attack. So that's pretty interesting. Alright, Dire hit so it raises the critical hit rate. No turning back. Uses a maximum of 3 slots of the user's move gauge. Based on the amount used, this move raises both the user's attack and special attack by... What? Attack up by 6 step ranks. Wow! So even, even though it's just a single Pokemon buff, I mean it just buffs Treko itself, you know, if it does use 3 ga uh, attack gauge, it literally buffs up, if I'm not wrong, that is what, 18 stat by up to 6. This is up to 6. So, oh, okay, so, sorry. So, each 
um, attack gauge is two stats up. So since if you use three, it's basically six. Hmm. Still, that's that's pretty powerful a boost, considering that it just boosts itself. So if you play with a member that has Liza, like I've been promoting Liza for from the beginning of time for Pokemon Masters. Uh, if you do use Liza in a team, um, you don't really need to have her boost your stats because Treko itself is pretty independent by itself. You know, it boosts its own attack and it boosts its own special attack plus dire hit plus. It gives you critical hit. Uh, without a doubt, Brendan is definitely a very, very powerful um, strike member. So, yeah, if you guys ob uh, obtained him before, uh, good job for you guys. Uh, definitely, he's a keeper. Uh, unlike Lelessa, you know, you might want to avoid um, getting her. Or rather, not, 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 I mean, it is good to have her around. Uh, it's you might want to avoid pulling scouts for her. So with that said, I am skipping Alessa. Luckily, she <laughs> is disappearing uh, on the 31st of October, which is Halloween night. So if you're planning to pull a scout, uh, Brendan is the way to go. You know, but aside from Brendan, uh, as of this point of time that I am recording this video, um, Pokemon Masters, or rather Dana, has already announced the next scout that actually will appear. And yeah, it, it belongs to the Psychic um, Trainer. Wait, what's the name again? I... The Psychic Trainer, um... The Psychic Trainer, Caitlyn, uh, and her Reuniclus. So, if you guys are fans of hers, uh, definitely you might want to conserve your gems. As you can tell in the top right hand corner, my gems are just a ton right now because I have not been pulling any of the scouts. In fact, uh, I've been focusing so much on training my own trainer collection right now. Um, you know, because I uh, haven't really been pulling scouts due to not making any scout videos recently and I've been saving up my gems because I've been waiting for a good trainer to actually try to pull for. Uh, so I guess Brendan is the way to go. Uh, I definitely know that Caitlyn was probably going to be a tech character or a support character because Reuniclus in the mainstream games uh, is definitely a, a support Pokemon it's not an offensive Pokemon so yeah so definitely with all of that in mind uh, if you're a fan of Caitlyn you know or uh, Katoria if you recognize her by her Japanese name you might want to consider putting your gems to her scout uh, you can still get Alessa and Brandon from her scout in the future if they are following that trend of having previous uh, featured scout trainers in the uh, brand new scout itself. So yeah. Anyway guys, let's do a 10 character pool. You know, for Brandon's uh, scout. You know, because I definitely wish to obtain Brandon. Uh, definitely a worthy trainer to have in your collection. So let's do this 30 gems off the bat. Uh, I'm just hoping that we do get something nice. After all, we haven't been pulling anything from Pokemon Masters for a while. So hopefully that gives us some kind of miraculous returning luck. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Alright, slotting in the Pori phone. Let's look for that bright flashing light within the Pokemon Center doors. Oh, oh it's bright alright. Oh, wow! So I got a duplicate. 
Uh, Karen is definitely going to be leveled up. So that's pretty nice. Okay, another duplicate. So we do get a 5 star duplicate, so that's pretty awesome. Alright, more duplicates. And lots of duplicates. More duplicates. Oh! Oh! Oh my goodness! We got Chris and Toto now! Okay, so if you guys have been playing past events, you would know that she is an awesome trainer off the bat, uh, especially when it comes to water type weaknesses. Uh, Ferrari Gator is so OP. Oh my goodness. I mean, just just tag teaming with people who actually own her uh, and fully evolve her total down to Ferrari Gator. You know, and my Lisa there pumping their Ferrari Gators up to their best conditions and watching them do 2,000 to 3,000 worth of damage each hit with Waterfall. That is just... Oh, so... So great to watch. So <laughs> finally obtaining Chris and Totodal for myself. Oh, I'm so happy right now. Oh. Okay, he's new for me. <laughs> Alright, another duplicate. More duplicates. So we've got two five-star trainers with one pool, even though we didn't get Brandon. I don't know, getting Chris is pretty awesome itself. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty contented with this um, scout. So yeah guys, so how did you guys fare with your own scouts? Uh, if you guys have been still playing Pokemon Masters, yes, I know um, the condition of Pokemon Masters uh, is in right now. It is definitely not, you know, pleasant. But I personally feel that it's not that bad actually as compared to what um, most people around the world thinks or rather says it is so yeah we'll talk about that all that actually in the next pokemon masters video that i'm making um basically it's my thoughts on how the game is currently at um you know considering it's launched from start to now you know we definitely need to talk about the producer's letters and what they are planning and of course what we can look forward to and definitely see how Dana you know is working alongside fans to improve the game so that's pretty pretty exciting um, to see how game developers are actually listening to what their fans you know are asking for and trying their best to implement um, suggestions at the same time you having their own ideas on how to make the game fun uh, with their desired um, outcome they wish to achieve so yeah so anyway guys thank you guys so much for joining me for another episode of Pokemon Masters um, hopefully you guys found all the information I shared regarding uh, Treko and of course Zep Striker um, may maybe it helped you out on deciding who to look forward to in um, your future scouts and of course at the same time who to focus on if they ever get returned as a featured scout. Uh, let me know by hitting the like button to this video and of course share this video to any of your friends who love Pokemon and are still surprisingly playing Pokemon Masters just like you and me and I'll see you guys in the next Pokemon Masters video. Until then, Bye!